podcast. I'm Jordana Abraham. And I am Jared Freed. It is so good to be back here with you, Jordana. How are you? What's going on? How you been? I'm great. Great to be back here. Spotify is having us again. Yes. So uh, great. We, the, the, we are at Spotify's Kingdom in the Sky here in downtown New York City. It's a beautiful office, beautiful studio, while our studio gets constructed. Yes. And, 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 and listen, a brief announcement before we get started. If you're wondering where was my U Up podcast at midnight, we have changed. I know you're fiending. If you were trying to listen at midnight <laughs> at twelve oh one, we're laughing at you. But you're like, the, we're, I mean, we're, we're, the you're our biggest fan. If, like, you were, if you were trying to live and listen at nine p.m. Pacific, that's right. normal. That is normal. Maybe it comes out for you at 9 p.m. on Tuesdays. I just don't think we should be calling these people abnormal who are, like, waiting for it to release. Like, that's a nice thing. No, it's beautiful. I love it. Well, you losers uh, didn't get it until (laughs) 6 a.m. this morning. Um, So we're releasing now. If you're you're a subscriber, nothing changes. But if you're just a regular freeloading listener— you, uh, the episodes come out at 6 a.m. on Wednesday, Eastern time. Yes. So this is just us giving you information. As of today. If you were wondering where it was, here it is. Subscribers, nothing has changed Nothing has you. changed. So you're not even, uh, you don't even know why we're talking about this right now. Um, you've been out and about. I saw you at, uh, you've been at in- the infatuation thing. Out and about, infatuation festival. I, I was part of the, you know, not a lot of food there. Which is weird. Weird. For a uh, festival about food, right? <laughs> they ran out of food on your dear old Uncle J train, but I'm sh- it seemed like a fun event. Um, yeah. I, you know, it's funny. Infatuation has been like, I was, you go to an event like that, and like, they have like the Chase Sapphire Lounge. And I'm like, I remember when this was a blog. Like, I do feel like I Isn't grew up a blog? with. Well, it's like an app that you can like find. Oh, it's an app now. I use it when I go on the I road. Use, I'll go. You know what they did, which was amazing, um, like the way they redid. You know all the standard. How do you say it? Zagat. 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 Yeah. Zagat. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It used to be like our parents' age. You had right. the fucking like Zagat book. Right. And you had to like search through all the things for the restaurant reviews. What they did, which was amazing, was they like put it all online and they made it from like a young person's perspective. Oh, well, that a was cool always per- a cool person's perspective. Well, that right? was always my issue with infatuation. It was a little too much personality and not enough food. Okay. Like it was always like, remember when you'd play Nickelodeon and watch Rugrats? <laughs> and I'd be like, get to the fucking like, How's burger. How's the carpaccio? Yeah, tell me now. <laughs> Like, I, I came here for top well, 10 pastas to eat on a Sunday when you're hungover. Like, right. give it to me. Well, another th- another thing why that I did like about them, to give them their flowers, as yes, you say, give was that they rank things on a 1 to 10 scale, which is a dangerous game. It's a I, dangerous game. But that is the thing. You, they That's took what a I wanted. Right. I want, right. I wanted that. What, they, 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 now, it's easy It's easy to process the information about the restaurant. And I'm not, that, I'm not a foodie. I think anyone, I think you know that. Right. Anyone who's... Knows me at all. Knows she came I'm not. Came here with her Starbucks cappuccino. <laughs> my, that's Mike's order. Oh, okay. <laughs> I do a cappuccino, but for my favorite exotic. exotic I would love coffee to watch shop. you and Mike on a like a romantic date. <laughs> Two noodles with butter, please. <laughs> <laughs> and chicken fingies. That's, that's for. I'm a little better than. It's him. our anniversary. <laughs> It's a very special dinner. Listen, well, I don't pretend <laughs> and to be a Gatorade. foodie. I don't pretend to be a foodie, okay? No, no, no. I, I listen. I, I, I appreciate the I honesty, the, yeah. the awareness. You will the not ownership. catch me at an infatuation event because I don't give a shit about that I stuff. I was there and I was looking at all the booths yeah. and I was like, oh, I can't wait to eat all this food. And the then, booths. Booths. Oh, booths. Yeah, okay. the booths. <laughs> the booze is what I had before we started taping today. No. Yeah. <laughs> Jared was texting, are you, just a little behind the scenes, Jared was texting, are you up, group yes. chat, um, via text, like, just manically this morning before we started <laughs> taping. I was really in the mood to, like, come here and, you know, bring to funny. I was really, yeah. like, ready to go. You're and then, doing it. Yeah, because, I, I don't know, I was in the car, the, it, it's, it's fall, there's, like, a little, there's a little bite in the air, which I like. Yeah, uh, it's there's, exciting. It, it, we, we got a celebrity breakup that we want to talk about. I'm uh, Kat Stickler and Jason Tardick. Yeah. What do you think? Um, here's well, the thing. I, I mean, I've ta- 
I hate that I'm bringing this up. Like, I, I, I don't like to talk. I am uncomfortable talking about people's breakups. Because you don't want anyone talking about yours. Right. I, I, I don't. Like a, <laughs> that is, I mean. That right. Is this is about like, me. You don't want it to be like a glass houses throwing stones kind of thing. Right. Because like something I, might come back to get you. I get it. Like, if I, I actually, this is, consider this a formal invitation to Jason to come on this show. Oh, totally. To be, to because I, I am empathetic to Or Cat. Or Cat. I don't think she will. Um, <laughs> I think he would. Maybe more likely, uh-huh. um, but I I'm empathetic to the position of men in public eye going through breakup because he's never gonna win. He's it, right. it, there's no win for him. There's and if you try to win, you'll lose because it'll look bad. And he's in the social media world, like he's done that. Well, he's tried for that as we've. I'm gonna preface this by saying I like Jason. I've been on his podcast. I think you have. I have too. too. I I will say. In behind, w- without being on camera, I've talked with a lot of people being like, great guy. Great guy, very yeah. personable. I like what he's, that. I like his whole thing about like transparency and money and all that stuff. Like, I think he's doing something cool. I like him. I think he, they played a slippery game, right. right? Here's the thing. When you come out super hot and heavy mm-hmm. on social media, you have made it into a, a thing that you want people to talk about. When you're pinning, right. you're like, relationship coming out posts your hard launch it, to your profile like you are sort of bathing in what the po- the other the flip side of this breakup coin well I, I, I guess it right? brings up a, 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 a more relatable question is do we all hate a couple that's on social media too much is there a limit for anybody mm-hmm. like if you had a, do you have a couple that comes to mind in your friend group or like exterior friend group or whatever that you're like that couple fucking sucks on social media. No, I think I think it's about I don't think it's about the the quantity, right? Okay, it's about what what they're doing. It's about how they do right okay. what they're doing and how they do it. But this is for anybody, not just celebrity, because we all mm. this is I, I, they were I making guess, it relatable to, to right everyone. to you losers to you losers <laughs> listen, who listen at midnight. Well, <laughs> the midnight losers. Yeah. Um. No, I because I think like anyone out there is wondering like listen, there's a thing called a soft launch and a hard launch, and it's like. I think everyone wonders, like, I don't want to be that person. Most people, mm-hmm. I think the normal, the us normals would say, I want to, I know I have to admit to I'm in a relationship because my girlfriend will fucking kill me <laughs> if I don't. <laughs> or on the, if you're, if I'm speaking for the female sure. side, um, like, I'm excited. I found someone. Right. And, and I want to like, let the world and know. I, and this is like a, a, a a social positive for me like people are rooting for me. like this is a positive totally for my life so so these are the two sides of the coin yeah i will be in trouble if i don't you will get the glory of i'm yeah. in a relationship on social media positive social clout positive I, yeah. I like that okay. um but then you have to like walk that tight wire mm-hmm. socially and i think some people do it well and some people you go who do you think you are? Well, some people come out like I I would call them and again, th- these people are not in the same league, but I would call the like almost if you think about like Taylor Swift and mm-hmm. Travis are not they're like they're their own they're probably not a good comparison cuz they're they're tough these, because they're, they're, they're so big that like Taylor's, they wouldn't be just posting each other online doing Swiffer ads. Ta- no, 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 no. <laughs> Taylor is so famous that he she has made his mom famous. Like right. like she made his brother another 50 million dollars like that's like crazy <laughs> like like that is we, that's another fair, strategy fair. Right? yeah i'm I don't trying know. to think of someone who's like who's done it and i think they came out i mean obviously there was like rumors that they were dating but right. then when they came out publicly on social media it was like hard and intense and fast and sponsored right well and the I sponsored i think the sponsored is the is the uh, is where you've crossed not the line i don't know who might say to cross the line but that's where people go Okay, you're making money right. from this. Now it's now it's public. Now it's in the public disc. You've made it part of like the public discourse. Right. Now we're kind of paying for it with right. our views. Yes. You know. And I mean, you've posted about this, not about them, but generally, like if you've posted a lot about your being together, we should we need the whole story behind the breakup. Like it's only right. fair. And you see this with the Bachelor, and something that surprises me about the Bachelor, Love Is Blind, how angry people get at people who don't. And we've talked about this on the on the recap, how angry the audience gets if they feel that there's not an honest pursuit of love. Mm -hmm. Like, look at Golden Bachelor Gary. Gary is like now like hated 
Like, and, and I don't, or Jerry. I yeah. have, oh, Jerry. Jerry. Okay. Gar- is Gar- it Jerry or Gary? His name. You should know The this. spelling of his name is the most annoying thing that's ever happened to me. I mean, me. it's I- crazy. It's like if my name was Lauren and I spelled it Amanda. <laughs> You're right. It, it, <laughs> it just doesn't make any fucking sense. It doesn't sound anything like that. No, Jerry. Gary, <laughs> people don't like him because he went they on the, like like it is so weird to see and again I'm going by my 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 my, my sniff test, you know, <laughs> like I, I don't know what the social but it seems as though he has this reputation of like, oh and when people talk to him uh talk about the golden bachelor, they go, Oh, what happened to that guy? He just went on to like get famous. I'm like this old nice right, man. What does he need to do that for? His name's Gary, and he spells it Jerry. I like Gary. He's a nice guy. He's also a guy who likes to fuck. And <laughs> <laughs> I, and I made that joke. Is there joke. an age where you can get past being a no, guy who likes to fuck? No, every guy, maybe 90. Every guy thinks he's 27 forever. I've said okay. this on this podcast many times. Gary, I saw him on the show. Big dog Gary. Big dog got to bark. Big dog got to eat. And I and I. He, he, I remember when he came in. He, when he met me, he goes, "Ah, oh, the closers." The one joke he liked of mine was that I called Teresa's boobs being out the closers. Oh well, that'll tell so you. So it's a like, lot. okay, <laughs> he's like, I was thinking that the whole time. I'm glad someone said it. <laughs> right. <laughs> like that, he goes the clo-, Like he referenced the joke right away. So I'm like, right. I, I get where his head goes to. Okay. Um, but even that guy, like. He they get a divorce six months after and everyone's Less like that. three months after <laughs> and everyone goes oh this was all for money and I go L- listen all that is at play but I don't doubt that people go on these shows and go oh I'm like dating someone and then it doesn't work out like right. but people get angry it is like and people see you a different way so like Jason and Cat you have this guy who's been with many social media people and he signs up to do social media stuff with them and it's like. Okay, dude. People start to wonder, like, I like, can he not date a social media person next? Like, does he have to date? Like, does he have to be worried about what the audience thinks? I like, mean, here's the thing: you don't have to be worried about the audience thinks. I think if you don't make it a central part of your, because social media nowadays is like you're showing you're showing your life, right? right? It's supposed to be like a representation of what you're doing in life, what you're focusing on, and like you see that for for yours too like you're well, you know you're all comedy that's what you're focused on that's like right. your thing right um and for him he made it like every single post for a few months was right. like about her and the the, the tiktoks together and the it's and again lot. i'm not saying it's wrong it's like a preference not my preference i think if i were him i would have eased in because i think if you ease in you can ease out but i think that it's just not a good i think it's just not a good look for guys i d- mm-hmm. I, th- I think like there is, I mean, women, there's the joke online is like men should have I don't no think it's social a good, media. I don't think it's a good look for women either, personally. So you think that, I, I'm sure they would both say, if I could redo this, I would do it a different way. Mm. Now having broken right. up. Like, I, I, I think like, if they had gotten married, I think we would have watched maybe the most obnoxious TikTok performance that we've ever seen. Yeah. Like, if it just kept going, like, we would have been like, what is this? Right. And it didn't. Because it, here's the thing, it, at some point checks gotta get cashed. You write checks every day, and this was a check he wrote. I, I t- to me it seems they got too far ahead, and then all of a sudden he's like, oh my god, I have to marry this woman or not. Right, I have to assess if I really even like her because like there's so many other things clouding. Right. Away, are, are we, we're now business partners and in a relationship in the span of a year. I can understand where he's like, how do we slow this down? And you can't do that at that point. She's got a well, kid. Then, well, then he's got to like, he's well, like the saying, father, you know, or not the father, but he's got to like, you know, <laughs> he father, went from yeah. like New York City podcast, uh, you know, I'm dating some chick who's huge on social media to like, OK, well, we live in Tampa and what's the next step? Right. But that's why it's an, but on that note though that's kind of what's annoying about this whole thing if he because he is pinning the post about the the super romantic story right. of she got off the plane and everyone was clapping and like <coughs> you did like you you did benefit from like romanticizing this and then I'm assuming he broke up with her we have absolutely no knowledge of if that's true or not but just the fact that he's the one who wrote the story I'm assuming he's the one who broke up and with her. the usually, way she's talking about it after I I would back I back you up on that assumption yes I usually think it seems the one the one who gets broken up with is quieter right I I you know let's okay to take this away from them I'll personalize this there 
this is the reason I stop myself from posting on social media is like, I wouldn't, I don't want to undo that. Right. I want to be so sure that I don't have to even think of unbuttoning that shirt. Right. You or, know? or the audience reaction. Right. And, the, and yeah. the audience reaction isn't that I care about what people think. I care about having to feel that. Like, right. Like I I think the negative comments, I don't I don't mind them, but they do make you like work through your shit more than I think most people have to. Right. Like you have to like go, was I right? Is this random person with no pictures? <laughs> Right about how I Do they know me my, better than my I commitment, know me? you know, like right, <laughs> like yeah. whether I can commit or not. So like, you know, I I feel for both of them because you go, they're probably hearing from like, well, he's just trying to get his you know followers, and right. she's hearing, he she just lets any guy become a father of her kid. Like she's already acknowledged that, right. like that, and they have to do the mental math. I, and I think of this like, you know, there's this weird thing of like, just have fun, let go, dive in. And you're like, mm. eh, right. Well, I don't want to. It's honest, again, to break, to make it more for like a normal person. This is why a normal, this is why a brand, an average woman, single woman in New York City isn't telling her friends and family about a guy that it's going well with. Because right. she doesn't want to have to see the audience reaction if she's too into it, if she's too optimistic about it, to them then breaking up with her a few right. months later. Right. And, and, and I think we would bo- like both be of the opinion that like, Meet the friends. Bring them in. Like, that's, like, mm-hmm. the best way to go. Like, I think that is, like, a better, like, if someone's like, well, it's the second date. We haven't, we hung out this one night, and then I'm out with my friends. Should I invite them to meet my friends? I'd be like, yes. Right. Because guy who's for real hangs out with the friends and doesn't care and, and is a normal person. And your friends get to judge that that guy and say, Wow, you look good together. They can get you both excited. There's something exciting about that. Well, then it's like but you're that, bringing them into your world. Right. And but then I guess like to bring it back to Jason and Kat, you go, they were probably excited by it. Like, look, the audience loves it. They say we look good together. Right. You know, that's the same as the friends. And and I listen, as someone who gets who's gotten carried away by that, wow, the friends like it, my family like, whoa, this is all here. And then the dust settles. And you go, Oh, we gotta like move to Tampa. <laughs> like, oh yeah, I guess life has to move on. So it's like it's hard to go. I don't know. It's it's, right. it's all. Again. I think it's a, here's the tough part for both of them, and for if you if you do this too intensely too soon, it's a little embarrassing. Totally. I think it's a little embarrassing. It's a little embarrassing to go that hard with the story of the clapping on the plane. And like the story was so much. It was so intense. But I'm saying, like to me, I was like, he, he, this must be. I, if this, when I saw that, I was like, he's got to marry her now. Right. Because, like, the story is, like, so romanticized and so intense that I'm like, who, like, they really have to be together for a while for this not to be weird. And then they right. weren't, and then I'm like, that's a little embarrassing. Also, when he writes that caption, it's a little bit like. It's like, she wrote the caption. He, he wrote the caption. Right, and yeah. she reads it, and she's like, right. look at, look at our, our story. We have the best, like, you're kind of like. I, I don't you're playing into a, a woman's like masturbatory f- tale. Oh, like totally. it is like this you know is our you, story page on steroids. Right. <laughs> and it's like why do guys act cold? And it's like yeah, I don't want to give too much. You know like I'm like in well, the Can't you just give a normal amount? It doesn't have to be the clapping on the plane, but right. <laughs> it can be... I well that well that's uh, that this is a call to like be a little bit more normal. Like I right. I, I ease into it i mean right. i'm saying that i don't have any issue with people who show i as you know the only influencers i follow are sean and Catherine lowe um <laughs> whom i, whom I love dearly yeah. and i would say no one is like oh they're very right. uh, private people like they post everything they do um but it did seem well, like gradual i think to an extent or like something about right. they have three kids like i'm like okay like post your like i don't assume you guys aren't going anywhere you've got like I, I, you know you moved I th- into two houses together and you have three children sure yeah. i i think of my brother a lot when it comes to like good male social media i feel like he doesn't post anything does he? that's right <laughs> But you he's from very much – well, he doesn't use social media for work. Right. So it is – he's like my view of, like, working guy who has social media, mm-hmm. you know? And it's not his – like, he doesn't get his rocks off via social media. Like, and, you know, they say, you know, like, men don't follow other men who are random men on social. Right. 
Like, I don't follow, like, a dude because I like his style. Who would you follow? For style tips? I, I don't even know. Or I, just generally. Uh, who would I follow? Um, if you and inter- Fat ass <laughs> women. <laughs> you don't follow any men? I'm trying to think. Ma- comedians. Okay. But, like, I'm trying to think of, like, my, my brother probably follows, like, I don't know. I But, like, I'm, like, I think the female version of social media is just a different thing. Mm-hmm. And what you get out of it, like, like it's to me. Well, I mean, the people who loved that relationship, the the Jason and Cat relationship, were mostly women. I'm right. Sure. I'm sure there weren't a m- bunch of men being like, "Look how cute they it, are." It's a it's a bunch of women and me. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> like I follow Jason. I think I do. Right. And I, I follow Jason. But I'm thinking of like my brothers. Like it's like funny stuff, sports. Yeah, that's what Mike. Follows. That's it. Yeah. That's you know done. Mm-hmm. And, you know, what do you post? Well, it's not my brother's not. He's posting him and his wife. Right. I love her. Stories, maybe from work once in a while. Here's where I am. But mostly sharing her stuff. Reposting. Reposting. And I don't know, because there's no like, hey, oh, my God, look at this outfit I had. Right. You know, there's gratification from a lot. of, And I'm saying I'm not every woman, but like a lot of women. I, I, I Listen, I live in the West Village. I see men taking photos of their girlfriends every day, and the photos are crazy. Well, women are the, more social creatures. So the, I think it makes more sense. Right, They're and like it's looking for the approval of other women. Right, my mom used to thumb through People magazine. We are now each our own, building our own People magazine. Right. So, you know so what's I, his, so um, so when when he's posting all these this stuff about her, what's the incentive? But that's what I wonder. Like, you don't have to do this. <laughs> You go, uh, you know, and I'm thinking of like I don't have to post. But he gets a lot more positive. They say men in that. relationships do better on social media. Oh, of course, way better. I could 100 percent see that. I think there's something a little there's some, and that's the reason that that uh, male presidential candidates want a wife. Right. Right. It, they feel 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 more trustworthy. Right. Well, this is this Less is how creepy. this is how honest I am. Yeah. People, I have avoided relationships for you. I I could have gotten in a relationship. I'd be the you know, biggest comedian alive. I thought you were said they would ruin everything. No, they both. Right. They would both ruin it all right. and and improve everything about your life. Right. I don't know. It's it, I I think what it like signifies is like listen, we have a podcast about dating cuz dating is difficult. Mm-hmm. And we have a podcast about modern dating because modern dating is like this weird terrain of unsaid feelings and you look at Jason and Kat and they kind of represent this like They're like an amplified version of your day-to-day absolutely couples. like yeah. and 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 when women are like you know i could see a woman being turned off by a man's social media presence and then i've been turned off by a female social media presence but like i don't know if my reasons for being turned off would even like be right. like considered like i'd kind of seem like i was being no i think people would probably share in that i think that there's I think that there's a thing with social media presence where it's like you're it wouldn't affect your desire to have sex with someone, but it would to date them. Right. You have to. This is your life. Yeah. Right. Like so I can understand like. You know, Jason takes himself out of a lot of like female circles, but not really. He's a good looking guy who's successful. I think he'll be fine. Yeah, I think right. he's going to be. But okay it's funny too. that he ro- he kind of acknowledged the embarrassment of it a little bit he by has saying, to. you know, I love when I love, I love hard. And that I think is a relate relatable thing to a, a woman who's been dumped, where right. you could come to, where you could go to the guy and say, "But she posted the picture of the clapping on the plane, and mm-hmm. you post, and you you met my daughter, and like, why would you do all these things?" And that to me is almost a response to that being saying, "When I at the time I felt at that that time I did feel that way, right? I, I don't anymore. I, it's annoying because like I think men have this thing where it's like." They they feel this way in the moment, and so they say whatever they're doing. I think for women, it's a more permanent feel. Like when they do something like that, they they're more likely to feel it in six months than and men. I don't think there's as much of a guarantee that they feel the same way. No, it's. Uh, I mean, we we kind of discussed this on the Love Is Blind recaps of like what you asked. Why do these men just like have nothing to say in these arguments? <laughs> and there was a commenter who made a great point about men being fixers. Okay, and this whole idea of like there's nothing for me to fix like well that's not and, the point well that's the thing like when someone's <laughs> like you know and with i think with a lot of men when they're like why would you do those things and it's like yeah that was back then 
I'm a different and, person and now, now. I'm different. Right. And I've made that a decision. That was three weeks ago. Right. When you make a decision, it's over. The, and then it's like, well, you, why did you make this? The decision's made. There's nothing to say. Right. And you see this from all these guys in Love is Blind. And I, I when you asked me, I had nothing to say. I'm like, I just, <laughs> yeah. I feel the same I way. I feel the same way. I, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, I, I was like, it's the most relatable thing in the I world. I mean, we'll get to the Love is Blind stuff, because I have a lot of thoughts. I mean, we're going to do, the recaps bit, are yeah, on YouTube. Be separate. Look, check um, it out. To, to get into a different subject, but the same, in the in the sense of, like, I, I think this, like, also lands in, like, to a little bit go into what we're talking about today, extremism in dating. Yeah. Like, we have an email here about canceled plans. We do. Okay? Canceled plans is one of those things where if someone says, you can get into extremes. Like okay. anyone cancels, I'm out. Right. People have their, I mean, people, here's the thing. People have their own rules. Right. About can, canceling, being canceled on. It's kind of like cheating. People have their own rules. Right. Uh, <laughs> um, Emotional canceling. Yeah. Let me ask you a question. What is the latest allowable time to cancel on a first date. On a first date. That's a great that's date. a great question. What is the latest you would be okay with hearing? Okay. Okay means like a little can still mean a little annoyed but still fine. Any form of cancellation is annoying. Okay. And I think so that's a you, given. That's a given. And and also when you cancel you say I'm sorry. Right. Hey, I'm sorry to do this. Okay. Uh, so it, being all the things latest. equal, the latest he's a poli- they he the or latest she, to where I would still see them again. What's the latest you would go on a date with them to still see them again? What is the latest you would be can you would allow yourself to be canceled on to then go on a date with them again? Three p.m. day of. Three p.m. Three p.m. day of. If they text with, me after three p.m., I think I'm done with them. After three p.m. with reason. Before three p.m., no reason. Just I gotta cancel. I think any time with no reason is I'm out. No, re- you gotta give a reason every time. Do you? I think so. I wrote out some cancellations that I would like to hear. You would cancel with no reason? Let Let's me read lie. you some cancellations. I don't care if it's a lie, but I think you would need a reason. <laughs> well, okay, so pre-3 p.m., how do you respond to these cancellations? Ready? The, your te- these are the texts you're giving These me. are the okay. texts. These are my, I Let's wrote these it. texts okay. out. Hey, I'm so sorry, but the week has been nuts. Can we do another time? Um, this are is pre-3 th- p.m. This is pr- the morning of. This week has been nuts. Hey, I'm so sorry, but the week is a bit nuts. Can we do another time? Yeah, How no. Pr- you? Yeah, no problem. I mean, I would be annoyed, but You'd I would. Be say, I, but I would say, say, yeah, no problem, and then I would put it in your court to create, to say the other time. And if you didn't say the other time, I would just call okay. It off. I think that's a fine. That's a hey, no problem. problem. Um, and then. Now yeah. we're back at zero. Right. Okay. But you, I'm putting it in. I'm not. I'm not suggesting the other time. Okay. Yeah. I think that text is also that person. Not might, that interested. Maybe yeah, never comes back. And it's a first date, and I don't really know you yet that much yet. So I'm kind of like, this is also different if it's a first date or a second date. Right. Totally different. This is te- first. Date. Yes. First date. I don't really know you. You say, not. Wh- what did you say? Say it again. Hey, I'm so sorry, but the week is a bit nuts. Fine. Can, okay. I might even be hoping that you cancel. I'm fine okay, here's it. another text. Hey, I know we had plans tonight, but I'm just not feeling it today. Are you free tomorrow instead? I'm just not feeling it today. That's a bad excuse. I this is why I'm wondering. I I, I don't know why you would give that excuse. I feel like again, it's I, a, it's actually more honest than it sounds like a lie. I have been. That's what I'm saying. I'd be not annoyed. feeling it today. Like I'm, I'm like, nah, I don't want to like look at anyone. Totally get that. Yeah. I expect a lie. I would prefer a lie. Okay. But you're saying not not feeling it today. Just not feeling it Can today. Can we do tomorrow? Can we do tomorrow? So I've given you. I would be turned off by the not feeling it today. I I actually think that text with the tomorrow proposition is like a very honest person. As, mu- as dishonest as it sounds, I think the first one is someone who doesn't want to go out with you. The second one is someone who's like, I do want to go out with you, but I will not. But not enough to go despite my not feeling it <laughs> right i would say i, still I won't think betray they, my standards they weren't that excited to go out okay second date more allowable first date i'm not i'm not feeling it today so uh, this is more allowable for a second date yeah okay hey i got pretty drunk last night and i woke up full i need a day to get back to normal 
can we get together next week instead, Tuesday? Okay. Um, more specific. More specific. And a day to I get together. I don't love the reason. <laughs> Again, you got a how reason. About just, how about just not feeling great today? I. Why what about not feeling it? You didn't not like feeling that. great. Not feeling like you're making it about your health. Not feeling great. I would have preferred. Hey, I just made a huge duty. I don't think. I <laughs> 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 There's no toilet brush. Okay. I? No, I. Okay. Not I'm, feeling. I'm, not feeling great. Can we do next week? Fine. Okay. Hey. My mom went into surgery. I'm going to be spending the day sending good vibes to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Can we do another time? Of course. I'm so sorry. I hope your mom feels better. See, that's that's a total lie. I mean, if it's a lie, that's a weird lie. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, hey, can that fat ass of yours wait a couple extra days to drink this fine cup of J-Train? Okay, I'm out. What? (laughs) You didn't even let me finish my text. (sighs) I got things that came up today. Gonna be a late one. Uh, <laughs> no. Okay. I don't like it. We have to we have to establish a report before I, before you pull that one out. Okay. Here's another game I want to play. You ready? Well, how can I ask you the Please. same question? Yeah. How when would she have to cancel for you to go out there, again? There is literally no cancellation on me that I would care about. You're at the restaurant. I, even then, you went to her neighborhood. You're at the restaurant. If that's the case, hey, this emergency happened. Hey, not I, feeling it. Not tonight. feeling it. <laughs> that would be an, of course. Yeah. Let's emergency, l- fine, of course. L- I mean, well, uh, to me, if it's past 3 p.m. on the day of, you got to have hard things. You that need have to happened. have a reason. Something, yes. Something's got to yes. have happened. I, I work, even work going late. Grandma I'd be okay might, with. must be dead. Grandma's dead. Yes. Everyone's dead. Yes. I'll get drinks next week. During the show, so you right. agree three p.m. is a good. Time I think three p.m. is a good time. I think like it is. It, it, I don't have this. I put on makeup. I got dressed when I'm making a date. Well, three p.m. I haven't put on makeup yet. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. But I'm saying like, I think you can cancel on a guy within. Like I, I, I I've just never been offended by a cancellation. Like I, I'm also like I want to go out with someone who wants to go out. Fair. So like I, but I also don't have all this other thing. I think when you cancel on a woman, there's like a lot of, there's stuff in the atmosphere. There's like way more I'm dealing with. Mm -hmm. Like I'm like dealing with like like even you said like not excited, excited. Like I do understand that. Like I would be, I would look at the text and go, is this person excited? Do I feel like I'm like just like bothering them? But I don't have this like. It wouldn't hurt my ego. I don't think. But me. Rescheduled on? Right. I just would go, listen, I only want to be out with someone who wants to be out with me. I don't. What if you were really excited about going out with him? Sure. Then it might hurt your ego. Uh, Well, I would say, listen, let me know when we can go out. I was excited to see you. Like, I. I, I guess it's like this other. Like, but also, like, in, you know, in your standard, slightly gamey kind of way, you do want to feel pursued as a woman. It's kind of like if he's doing this before, if he's canceling before even the first date. Is this going to be the kind of relationship where I'm going to have to be chasing him around? Right. Well, would you rather? Or think men are more open to that idea? Sure. Well, this is right. Yeah, that's an option. Right. Would you rather a good cancellation or a bad plan? A, well, it depend- how bad is the plan? How good is the cancellation? So <laughs> let's go to the email yeah, because I think it. it's worth reading. Um, if you're out there and you're going to be in, you're in Raleigh. I'm in Raleigh this weekend doing shows. Also, Tarrytown, the special taping. Um, we are selling out, so get your tickets now. And St. Louis, Missouri. I'm coming to St. Louis. And I just think one more note on the canceled plans mm-hmm. is that I think it's okay to have – we're not going to give you a rule about canceled plans. That was my specific rule. I'm not saying that should be everyone's rule. I think it's okay to have your own rule that works for you. Right. You know, well, knowing, I, by knowing your knowing yourself. I agree with that. I I think it's okay to be turned off. It's okay to be you know. Right. It's okay to not care. But I think by reading those cancellation texts, you see like not every cancellation is the same. Right. Not every cancellation feels the same. Not every cancellation. Feels thoughtful. Feels thoughtful, and not every cancellation feels like someone who really wants to go out, and there's other things being said. So, like, mm-hmm. these rules, I, you know, if you know, again, if it's past 3 p.m., I would expect what happened. Right. I mean, have you ever canceled a date you were really excited to go on? Yeah. 
Okay. Absolutely. I don't think I have. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be there, desperate. Okay. Hi, j and Love the podcast so much. Thank you for all the wise advice and comedic entertainment. I'm a 31-year-old woman in New York City, and I need your advice on day of cancellations on first dates. Recently, I've had two guys cancel on me a few hours before our first date. The first one reached out to me and said he has to stay late for late at work. The other told me he had to go to the ER for breathing problems the night before and asked for a rain <laughs> check only after I reached out at 2 p.m. to confirm our 7 p.m. date. As someone who that's a that's a good side though. I think if you have to ask and they can, they only cancel when you ask, that's annoying. I have I have an opinion on this. Okay. I I think some of these strong independent women need to start cash in that check and be strong independent women you heard it here first it's you women that are the problem <laughs> as someone who is Take that sound bite out that's yeah get that <laughs> no i i I, I think this well, is something as a guy that annoys me well let me let me finish yeah, yeah i i, I hear what you're saying yeah. i i just yeah as someone who has never canceled a first date i think i come off a little cold in my responses but just can't help but be turned off by this. Am I being too harsh and I need to be more understanding? Or is just this just their way of showing they're not that interested? Is there a way to show that I'm still interested in going in a warmer way? Should I still even be interested in going? Jared and Joanna, how would you cancel a first date? Thanks, grumpy and alone. Well, <laughs> thank you. Grumpy and alone. That grumpy sounds very New York. <laughs> I want that right? t-shirt. Right? <laughs> grumpy and alone. I like that. That's <laughs> Well, to the grump, um, I uh, match dot com handle. Right, <laughs> grumpy and alone. Who wants to date me? Mm. I'm grumpy and alone. Cookie monster. <laughs> I here's the sign off is actually important. Okay, you can feel. I feel misery. I can sense misery. Okay, there is this thing, and I'm happy you brought up the texting first, the day of. Here's what I would say, and I'm, I, I, I made, I was joking about like these strong and independent women. I think people take gender out of it. Okay. If you wake up the morning of a date, and you're just waiting for this other person to blow you in the wind towards this date, I don't think you value your time and energy at all. When I wake up the day of a date, around 10 a.m. ish. Hey, we still on for tonight? Would you hey. be would there would there be any way it would turn turn you off if someone texted you that? No, it actually turns me on. It's okay. it, it it's it's and turns me on not like sexually, it's more <laughs> <laughs> Morning boner. Morning, I just immediate wood. Okay. In public. <laughs> I'm just saying I'm turned on by like you fucking have a spine you have a day you have uh, i got things to do i gotta make sure my ship is pointed at the direction that it needs to go to get to right. 7 30 in the west village at so and so bar you know so if you because what happens do you a get lot, women who text you to confirm i get i or do it they do it okay. Yeah, we're all we're all adults with our own shit going on. So, hey, it, I woke up. I'm looking at my day. I got to be in it by 9. I got this date tonight at 7.30 that's planned on the book, but anything can happen because anything can and will. So when I text, hey, just want to check in, 10.30 or uh, 7.30 still work? I think there's, like, if you think there's something wrong with that, I think there's something wrong with you. I could agree with that. Yeah. Like, like... You're saying that you're a right. woman with a company, a plan, a life. Right. You know, like just like to me, especially when it comes to first drinks, when it comes to like, what's the deal here? Mm -hmm. Like, I, I would expect that of anyone to value their day, because what happens a lot is and I've had this happen where I'm going to cancel. And I feel like this woman is just waiting on the other end, just like, I know he's going to cancel. <laughs> And I can't wait to call him out on this bullshit. And you, it just feels like, like they're like on the other the end. opposite of sexual tension is. Right. <laughs> Cancel <laughs> tension. Yeah. They're just like. Schedule and, tension. Schedule yeah. tension. And you just, and I know, and I'm like, fuck, I got to cancel on this person. And then it's usually like a about third About to prove date. them right. I'm about to prove, right. right. And, and they, and they want to be right. And they didn't even, they plan, it seems like these women plan these dates just to be canceled on so they can be right. 
Well, it's because, all fulfilling prophecy. Maybe that's why you're canceling. Well, them. maybe you should stop going out with these people who you know are wasting your time. Is that you? I'm just <laughs> yeah. Don't date me. Stop dating me. I just hate this because sometimes you'll be like, "Hey, I can't do it tonight," and you'll get the text back. Aha! <laughs> I knew you were gonna cancel. Were, I knew this was coming the whole time. Really I told all that? my friends you have a small penis. <laughs> They really say like I need that to is right. They I've had that? that happen before, yes. Oh. And you go because this grumpy and alone bitch. <laughs> Thank you for writing in. She's great, but I do sense the idea. Like only after I reached out at two p.m. to confirm, what were you doing all morning? You have a life. But I still think I'm not it's trying rude to blame that, the victim. I still think it's rude that he didn't text her if he was gonna, if he was going to cancel. Absolutely, that's not for us to say. She says, "Should I not go out with these people?" I don't know what you should or shouldn't. No, do. I, I agree. She should confirm earlier, while also sympathizing because I mean, here's the thing. Last time I was single, I was 27 years old, mm-hmm. and I don't think I would have I would have texted to do the confirm. But I I don't think that's the right move. We're I bringing up I, a better a better crop of 27 year olds. No, we are, I, we that's are, the point. That's the point right, of this podcast. But I'm saying I, I'm speaking for them as someone who had their mindset right. of like first of all if it's if it's a dating app date, I don't really want to go that much anyway. So part of me is kind of hoping they'll they'll cancel. Aren't we all? Right? Yes. Sure. If the dating app. If I've actually met them or it's a date I'm excited about, then I'm kind of like and again, I'm bringing you through my 27-year-old mind of sure. probably being kind of insecure and not being super powered about my day. Fine. Is I want to I want to see if they like me enough to confirm. Right. Before I before I give that in. I know, and I I understand the impetus because you're sitting there going, I just this is me going. You're looking for clues. Mm-hmm. Am I liked? Yes. And I I think you will get those clues faster and with less exhaustion knowing that you have a great life and you got things to do and anyone who should go I, I this is all empowerment bullshit i know anyone who will go, go out with you should be lucky they're going out with you and that's something you have to like say into the mirror i get it sometimes you have to go hey you have a day to do okay mm-hmm. you know i got shit to do like I, I, I think like if you wake up the day of the day and just go i got shit to do and then send that text yeah like yeah you do have to, and i i just think like and it's i think it's important to know that if the guy is ex- first of all he doesn't even know you yet so who so if it's a first date so right even if he's turned off by that who gives a shit but right. i don't think he would be you know? <laughs> no he, if he's turned off by hey what's the plan tonight then mm-hmm. they didn't want to go out with you anyways the, and and this is actually more, I think, helpful, too, for, like, a fifth date. That's what I was going to say. I think this is more, an almost more interesting question mm. for, like, a third to fifth date. Right. Because I do think for a first date, I wouldn't care that much because I wouldn't really want to go anyway. Mm-hmm. Like, the couch, like you said, the couch is right there. I don't totally. really know this person. I'm not that excited, especially if I've never met them before. So, to me, like, a first date, who cares? A right. third date, I think, is where it gets more interesting because you're more invested. You're hoping they're more invested. Right. I've canceled a fifth date-ish, whatever that number is. Sometimes I've canceled it because I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing with this. I feel like you, when you cancel a fifth date, you usually do, and I've seen your these texts, <laughs> I feel like you usually do a cancel and end it. It'll be a cancel and ending. You don't usually do a cancel and reschedule, I think. If I've rescheduled it, it's because I'm going, Jared, go. You like this person. Mm-hmm. Seek this out. Um, it's it's a hard and, – and if I'm canceling – yeah, if I'm canceling it, it's like I'm putting off the decision for another day. Right. And, and I, you know, I lie. You know, do you with, wait for a confirm for those? Or uh, do you... What's the plan tonight? Hey, tonight's not going to work. <laughs> no, no, there is no plan. <laughs> Ta-da! <laughs> the plan is for me to think about whether I like you or not. Ah! <laughs> I'm just saying, like, a fifth day cancel is I someone buying time. I feel like what's the plan time. for tonight sounds a little aggressive. For some no, I would, I, I've had that. I usually would say, like, what are you thinking for tonight? Oh, that's a good one. I, 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 I do. Well, when what's I do, the plan? What's the, Sorry, I was tell me the plan now. <laughs> <laughs> I, when I'm doing it, I, I've sent the text, hey, 7.30 still work. Right. You know, like that's, that's the text too, I yeah. sent. Um, yeah, canceling. That's what I'm saying. It's I think it means a lot more on a fifth date if no one if no one confirmed with me or a third. Let's say a third date. Because mm-hmm. fifth date, I'd say we're dating. Kind 
50 okay. was like we're you know i think we're dating sure five, i'm seeing fi- someone i've been talking date. with someone yeah okay. third date is like almost like the breaking point of like third date i'm thinking of sleeping with you that night i'd like to know you're interested enough to confirm with me <laughs> If I'm gonna let you inside me, can I at least get a confirmation? Can I at least get a confirmation yeah, 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 text? Yeah. Like that would be that would be where it would be like more anxiety ridden for me. Like, should I text him? And I agree, I sh- you should text no matter what the date is because you have your own shit going on. But right. I would be more afraid of like turning you off or feeling like I'm s- like I'm kind of pushing it with a guy who's not that into let me, me. Let me just say, no man has ever been turned off by hey, what's the plan tonight? Right. And let me also say, and I, I'm speaking in extremes because I just believe this. Um, hey, what's the plan tonight? Is more the guy's not going to think, ugh, this fucking chick. Clingy. Is clingy. Oh, right. what, is mm-hmm. a, what is this fucking ballsy woman being a little too much? No. What he's thinking is, all right, what am I going to do with this thing? Well, that also feels shitty. <laughs> well, no, I'm saying, but that's everyone's doing that. Yeah, you know, like it's well, not personal to the person. It's but, just right. Do but you want to go out? I might not be. I might be like. You could be yeah, doing the same thing too. But I probably am not. Right. If, <laughs> and, uh, the person saying, "What's the plan tonight?" wants to go out. Right. And well, the person the, getting that. Well, that sucks. To, I'm mean, saying that's why you don't want to text because you don't. You prefer to not be the person sending the text. You prefer to. You prefer to be the person getting the text sent to you. Sure, but if you go so early on it, you almost like get ahead of like thinking through that. Okay. Like, if you do that at 8 a.m., that's just you getting on your day. Fine. As, right. as opposed yeah. to, like... It's almost at 12 a.m., it is like, okay, you, you're you the one who wants to go out more. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. So... It's a little bit of a game, and I don't like it, but I do agree with you. Again, if I could go back in time, we're creating better 27-year-old daters. Yeah. If I could tell my 27-year-old self something, it would be ask for the confirm, ask for the date, Ask, re- reveal my own feeling on about where we are. But and those are things I didn't do, but that's why we're... The feedback, though, yeah. I will say is you're, there's no reveal going on. I've never thought... <laughs> I, there's, like, there is no lose to anyone who's excited for a date, and I'm saying this right now, to text the person they're going on the date with, hey, what's the plan tonight? You, that, that other person doesn't think you're desperate. The other person doesn't think, oh, my God, like, what do they want? A plan? Like... Every everything this will do for you is good. Right. I just I totally agree. I'm, I'm just saying the fact that you have to send one in the first place does feel anno- like I'm not saying that sure, it, but it's, that it's going to change anything if you do it or you don't do it. But have but admitting or getting to the place where you feel like I need to send the confirm text is kind of being like, OK, he's not that excited. But that's my point. The earlier you do it, the less it's about them. I agree. 8 a.m. 8 a.m. Send it. Let's do some off. 3 a.m. for subscribers. <laughs> <laughs> Send it a three. For your real losers. <laughs> um, let's do some awkward accounts. You ready? It. Yeah, you want to read it? Feather Feather. I wanted to share my first kiss and first date story as it's as quintessentially awkward as they come. It was 2019 and my freshman year of college, and I had zero romantic experience whatsoever. I matched with this guy on Bumble, and for a first date, he invited me over to watch The Office in his bedroom. Never a good sign, LOL. I mean, <laughs> where else are you going to go? This I, guy's got no money, no place. Are you kind of thrilled that you didn't have dating apps in college? A little bit. I think so. I think yeah, back then I wish I had it. Okay. Like, I'm sure, like, in the like if I was presented with a dating app in college, you I'd be like, loved it. fuck, right. yeah. yeah. Now I'm, like, better off for not having that. Right. You, you look know? back and, and are like, this would have been... It's I think this wouldn't have made my college experience as great as it was. I don't think it really enhances social skills. I mean, I've said this. These apps were created by male nerds I mean, to create a world where it was easier to be a male nerd. I mean, just the idea of like being in a place where everyone around you is like trying to hook up and date and have like that's literally like what a college town is. Right. To then bring this thing which kind of cheapens it. It's a more, crutch. I don't know. I wouldn't like it. You're in a college town. That's where you learn to like be an adult to right to get rejected. To, yeah, and 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 wins and losses. I I think this like takes away all losses a dating app. Like, you never get turned down. Right. It's like, I don't think. But also, uh, just there's so many opportunities to meet people in real life, in college. Absolutely. I mean, everyone's there to meet people. That's what I'm saying. Like yeah. to bring it into it, I feel like it's not great. Anyway, 
They write, but very college about their first date in his dorm room bedroom watching The Office. That sounds right. Yeah. We had pretty much no conversational chemistry and barely talked at all. I mean, like, that's even, like, the annoying part about, like, they met on an app with no ability to talk to one another. Right. So they didn't see if they had, like, a... a we see, I see you at the bar chemistry. Right. See so you at a frat party chemistry. Now they're doing this in a bedroom. Right. So uh, he sat in his desk chair while I sat in the corner of his bed three feet away from him while we watched. And nothing happened. Then I went home. For some reason, I went on a second day with him again in his bedroom to watch his favorite movie, 500 Days of Summer. Which we still need to watch. We have to watch, which is a terrible movie, in my opinion. Oh, again, we had almost no conversation. So we've. this is a movie that we've been told as the test of time has not been kind to. Yes. After we're done with Love is Blind, we'll, we'll watch this movie. That'll be our next You Up for More. Yeah. Eventually, we cuddled on his bed very stiffly. He leaned in for a kiss. My first kiss. Naturally, I was so excited, even though the past few dates were, were so boring. And he completely <laughs> missed my lips. He only made out with the area under my nose. What do you think? Why would someone do that? What is that area called? Is that a lip? Abo- upper li- No, it's above the lip. Is there a name for this? thing though there should be he got can we name it what do Maybe you, we'll, what would you call it i don't know i don't even have a under f- cupid's, cupid's bow, bow? Maybe he that thought he thought that would be romantic. It's cupid's <laughs> bow. It's gonna if he had said cupid, I I just I'm a big cupid's bow guy. <laughs> I got a cupid's bow in my pants for that cupid's bow. Amazing. <laughs> the past two dates were so. He completely missed my lips. He only made out with the area under my nose. Literally, the area was sopping wet with his saliva, and my <laughs> mouth wasn't being touched by his at all. I was shocked, horrified, disgusted. I thought maybe we were both just positioned awkwardly, so I sat up, and again, my lips were cold. My mouth was just exposed. I didn't know what a kiss was supposed to be like, though, so I thought this was the norm. (laughs) I hated every second and made up an excuse to go home. I asked if he would walk me to the train station because it was dark outside and he lived in a sketchy neighborhood, and he refused. What a monster. (laughs) He's like, it's dangerous out there. Why would I go out there? (laughs) Made up an excuse about having rowing practice in the morning and shut the door in my face. Not nice. <laughs> right. He's like that chick with the horrible Cupid's bow. <laughs> Wouldn't get out of here. Uh, the next day, he asked if I wanted to come over again and said he had a great time and that I was a good kisser. Oh, my God. I said no thanks and never spoke to him again. Obviously, I was too immature and inexperienced to communicate with him. But overall, I don't look back on my first kiss fondly. Fast forward to 2023 and we're married. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> He comes on my Cupid's bow every <laughs> night. No. I haven't thought about this man in years. <laughs> Suddenly, he requests to follow me on Instagram. I let him. And he proceeds to go through my entire Insta feed and only like my selfies. Ah! <laughs> Guy came back a little experienced. He's ready to go. I ended up removing him as a follower. Sincerely, kissing and missing. This is very funny. Good this guy's off. like that girl I nailed it with <laughs> years ago. Well, he's going back through the rolly. Yeah. He's like, <laughs> who's out there that was into me? Yeah, I mean, am I surprised that the guy is using the dating apps to invite girls over to watch his movie on watch movies at the other end of the bed in college? Is that's as college not as a, a great kisser? Or right. Well, whatever. she's not a great kisser. It was her I mean, first kiss never, too. Yeah, well, you know, that's what I'm saying that's what that kind of it all checks. Right. Like I, I, it, I feel for everyone involved. He wouldn't walk her to the train station. He's a monster. Right. He's a monster. We should. He should lose his job. Find him now. He should. Yeah. I mean, the Instagram thing is hilarious. Like, years later, right. they'd be like, "Oh yeah, that hot chick." What's that I going met on? Take me through the mind of someone who's doing that. Some girl that you, you oh, made out with a girl in college. Simple. Yeah. <laughs> girl from college. Somehow you find your way to her page. Okay. Via you stumble friend, upon it. You, you, it, which is possible. Yes, the modern friend day of a stumble friend. upon. Yeah, yeah. the mo- yeah, like I uh, tagged picture. Oh my God, is that who I think it is? Comes up because you went to the same college on your few you page. Right. Maybe Suggested you, friend. Suge- whatever whatever way you okay. can stumble. And he's like, Oh, we matched on Hinge. Oh shit, we made out in my apartment while the you know the dinner party episode of The Office played. She's hot. I wonder what she looks like. Ah, and then you go, ah, I got. Should I request? Should I not? And then he goes, <laughs> Yeah, why not? I'll throw a 
throw a Hail Mary. Okay. And then he gets the acceptance. She looks good. Oh, sh- let's okay. Let's like all the selfies. See if she likes mine. Just back. the selfies. Yeah, to let her know I'm here. I'm here. Yeah, I'm hard. I'm hard. <laughs> I'm ready to get after that Cupid's bow again. Okay. And that's like, yeah, he's knocking on the window. And how do you feel when she removes you as a follower? Uh, and no feeling at all. No feeling at all. I think it's more like, I guess that was. No shame? I guess it's a no. Are what you, are you, what's no the embarrassment? Shit? Well, I guess because it's not really public. You I know, guess I would feel like an inner, imba- I would feel like a, a rejection a little bit. Of course. I mean, it's as rejected as you can get. Right. On social media. And it wouldn't bother you. I mean, I'd be bothered, but I would never speak of it again. Like, okay. I'm not like, you like. This is the problem with internet dating, internet everything, is, like, it all kind of happens in the alleys. Right. So, like, why do men send dick pics? Why do men, you know, act weirdly and like all your pictures? Because they're not doing that publicly. Mm -hmm. You know, that is behind closed doors. No one sees that they like ten of your pictures in a row except you. I guess. That's why it's a flirt. It is an online flirt to go and like ten of your pictures in a row because – he knows it's going to show up, and that is him going, knock, knock, knock. I'm here. I'm ready to right. make out with your upper lip again. I would still feel kind of, like, embarrassed myself, though, even if no one saw it. I'd be, if it were me, I think I'd be like, oh, read that wrong. Like, that feels not great. Right. This is, uh, you know, this is something on Love is Blind that becomes very apparent, is the the men that are in these, like, arguments, it's just like, I'm going to mosey along. <laughs> You know, like win some, lose some is and and you are brought up as a guy to just take it to take it. Right. You're you're basically well, talk to her. Yeah, talk to her. That's why I'm not sending the the eight a.m. confirm text because I right. have that feeling of if you don't answer or if you answered wrongly, I feel like a little more ashamed. Right. I mean, uh, we've been callous. I put to myself this. out there. Right. We're to, well, we're taught to be chased, not right. to put ourselves out and there. So for us, it's like you only eat what you hunt. You know, right. big dog got to eat. Yeah. That means big dog got to go out there in this great big world and embarrass himself. I guess it's more embarrassing to not try. To just just sit like at home that. alone. That's why I don't believe in shy guys. Mm-hmm. Like that whole thing. Oh, he's shy. Maybe he's shy. That that explanation never works on me. Mm-hmm. Maybe he's shy. No guy is more shy than he is horny. Okay. <laughs> not interested. OK, let's do another one. Another email. Let's do it. All right. Hello, J&J. Thanks, as always, for putting out content that we can't live without. We're all addicted now. Thank you for that. My question is simple. It's a simple one, I think. Jared speaks about his preference for a woman to be a PETA. Pain (laughs) in the ass. No, I've learned. So we we said that we coined this term, the PETA. We liked it. Pain in the ass, PETA. And then I got a message from a teacher who she said, and can I say? You blocked her because she's a teacher. Well, (laughs) I hope people know this is like a joke here. I don't hate teachers. They're like, I know you hate teachers, but I guess teachers refer to like moms and parents as pitas. Oh, that's funny. And that they don't know. The parents don't know. So it's like an a, like an inside teacher speak. That's love. I love it. I I'm love. trying to think of which of my friends are probably known li- that way to the teachers. Okay. I can name a couple. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I know. I know. I know who they are. I have a good idea. Yeah. All right. Um. A PETA sounds like it means a woman who vocalizes her opinions, even if they're critical of him, expresses her every discomfort, and complains a lot? I don't know. That's a, that's a, a harsh like, retelling. You don't like that definition? Uh, how, would you, how would you define it? I think a pain in the ass is someone with a standard that they are going to let you know. It sounds like what she said. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm definitely a people pleaser in recovery. It's my tendency to over-accommodate to keep people happy and create predictable circumstances for myself by over-functioning in my relationships. On dates, wow, they just spoke to my soul. I never heard it explained that way. Maybe, That's yeah. So you're not a PETA. Predictable circumstances. I am not a PETA. You're not a PETA. Uh-uh. I am very easygoing. I would say I would. Unless I believe in what I'm peta about. Right. You have to feel strongly. Like, unless you're in the luxury lounge. If I'm in the luxury lounge, I let it fly. Right. On dates, I tend to be a great active listener, but I have to regularly remind myself to share more so that my date can get a sense of who I actually am. Even if I'm not often prompted to speak about myself because my date stinks at asking questions. <laughs> I picture myself as a kind of pleasant mirror, just reflecting people's positive qualities back to them. At best, people find me pleasant, but don't know anything more about me. At worst, I come across boring as fuck. Yeah. 
When I'm into a guy, I want to surrender and show him I like him. I want to take a genuine interest in the things he likes and make my life easier for him if I can. Sorry, make, make, life. make life easier for him if yeah. I can. But I find again and again in my dating experiences that showing a man I'm more interested or expressing my positive regard for him too easily imbalances the scales and things don't work out. Only when I direct my attention elsewhere or am more cool towards him do I find that he comes to, to me. Sometimes I even find the more disappointed or madder I get at someone when they displease me, the more they are drawn to me. When I'm yeah. when attracting the men I actually want, do I need to be mean to them? <laughs> men will tell us they want a nice girl, but do they actually want a difficult bitch? If so, how do I be more of a PETA? Thanks, PETA in trading. I love this question. It's a great question. I think they've... It, you know, sometimes you read an email and it's like, it's just like the way they describe a PETA. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just a skew from what I mean. Okay. Do you know what I mean? It's like, close. It's close. I kind of am thinking that that's a little bit what you were describing. Well, you're not, I, you don't want someone who's mean. Right. I, that's <laughs> the thing. There's a thin line between owning your standard and letting someone know your opinion. Right. And I think it's about the way you do it. Right. And, and, and addressing someone and belittling them. Right. You know, like we it doesn't it's not about being mean. No, it's not about being if mean. You're doing, at if you're doing if you're mean, you're doing it wrong. I totally agree. <laughs> like it, like the and and I'm not telling you to play a cool like to play a cool thing is not even what this is about. Right. That's not about that's not what a PETA is. No, it's it's like I, I think here's the key to being a good PETA is in my opinion, it is letting those someone know how you feel. Whether that's turned on, turned off, or sideways, and not in the sexual sense, just mm -hmm. just in life, in your feelings, while also allowing for retribution. Okay. I don't. I think the best types of pains in the asses are the ones that you know care about you and want you to make the uh, that you can make feel good again. Right. But also, something about being a good pain in the ass. Sort of like being, to me, it sounds like almost like a good negotiator, like or mm. good at sales, right? And the person who's usually the better negotiator is the one who's more willing to walk away, yeah, if it doesn't work out. And I think that's something you can't like force yourself to be, right? Do you know what I, I'm saying? Right. I I guess like, yeah, I. That that's a good point. I do think you have to. I agree with what you're saying. I don't know if that's on the same vein as like, I've been on dates with people that are just like. I'm like, do you have any opinion on anything ever? They're agreeable, too agreeable. You're yeah, right, like, right. like, I, and I'm agreeable. Like, I do right. not care about much. Uh -huh. But when I do care, I have to let people know. Yeah. So I think that's like, I, I don't think it's like, I don't think, I don't need someone to have a hot take on everything. But I need to feel like I'm volleying with someone. Right. You know, like, I, I don't want to like, just like. So it's more about having an opinion. Yeah, I think that's more about what it is. Like. Not like. Complaining to the manager. <laughs> right. I, or like, maybe a little bit. I mean, I don't know. She she references this thing at the end of the email, but like men, all men, when you ask them like who they want in their wife, they'll say like, I wish wants like a really nice, like they say they want a <laughs> right. nice girl, like a really nice girl to be their wife and raise their kids, just like a nice person. But mm -hmm. like, do they? I think no. it's the other. I, don't, I, I whenever I a hear lot those of men answers, say that. I know whenever I hear those from men, I'm always like, I don't even know what you're talking about. Like, mm -hmm. I think you want someone who will go to bat for you. And I you don't, don't know, want I, a nice person. I don't need nice people. I Nice people are, who cares about nice? If someone described me as nice. Men hate to be described as nice. I think it's the worst. Men hate it. That is such a nothing. I feel, I've called men nice and they've been like insulted. It by is it. an insulting description. Which is Oh, that's strange. a nice guy. I don't think women are insulted by being called nice. To me, it's nothing. You've done nothing. <laughs> like, you're just, you're just like, not yeah. You're not bad. Not bad, not good. What would you? What's a preferable adjective to nice? Um, hot, sexy, cool. Hot, sexy, cool. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, you know that Jared guy. He's real hot. Well, sexy, how would you cool. want to describe a, a person you were dating to your mother? She's a giant pain in the fucking ass. No, That's how I, I, I'm saying, how would you like think about how you would if your mom's if you were dating someone and your mom was like, what's she like? <laughs> I, I don't know if she would even ask she's, that. She's question. hot, sexy, cool. <laughs> hot, <mom>. sexy, cool. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if she would even ask that question. 
but I, I understand what you're saying. I don't but know. you would describe her probably as your mom would want to. Well, a mom would probably want to hear that she's nice. She's nice. I guess I, I, I guess I would be like fun. Okay. Fun. That's I think. what you'd want. Yeah, like they're really fun. Great, great, great hang. Great hang. That sounds to me. slutty. <laughs> <laughs> I don't a lot of fun. Right. A lot of fun. She's yeah. fun. That's what I said. If I'm ever like, I used to be a lot of fun. It means like I used, and then I just use this to describe myself. Like yeah. I used to be sluttier. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's fun. Mm-hmm. Oh, very mm-hmm. fun. Hey, mom, I got a fun one on my fun. hands. Yeah. You know what I mean. I think you would call her nice. Nice, I don't know. I to Sorry. me, I, I think that's a disparaging. Okay, for women, too. Anyone. Anyone. Okay. They're nice means you don't even want to talk to them. Interesting. There's no, but that's kind of goes back to the PETA thing, like, right? Well, let's yeah. I guess we were saying like, something about Halloween. I cut you off. Well, roughly. Halloween's coming up, and it's like, okay, let's say it's coming up, and it's like, what are you dressing as? You're dating someone. What are you dressing as? And they're like, I'm doing this. And you're like, oh, I'll just, like, do what you're doing. Okay. Like, well, don't you? You want them to have an opinion. Right. What, what, what's your Personality. Plan? Do you have Do you have plans? Do you have things going on? You have Like, if someone I was dating was like, well, we haven't discussed Halloween. What the fuck's going on? Okay. You'd like that. I would uh, I would go, oh, well, I'm I'm doing this. I don't know what I'm doing. Well, you don't have a plan? Like, that right. to me is a pita. What are we doing? What yeah. are we doing? I, I assume we're hanging out because I like you and you like me and we've been dating. Uh-huh. And you didn't even go over your costume with me? What's the deal? <laughs> you <laughs> know? You bought us the uh, Pebbles and Bam Bam costume. Right. <laughs> I, 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 I kind of was thinking maybe we'd do a couple's thing. Oh, you don't want to do a couple's thing? Well, I guess I'll go with my friends and we'll do our own thing right. and maybe we'll meet up. Like, well, like someone who's a- a good at sales, they're assuming clothes. Right. What are we doing? Act as if. Right. So, like, to me, that's a pain in the ass. Not And, and like, again, the, to go back to the negotiation table, Okay, I'm gonna do my thing with my friends. You don't want to hang with me, right? All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna go do my thing with my friends, and it's like that's something we can't tell people to do, right? Well, it's, it's what I'm saying that the hardest part about being a pain in the ass is feeling confident enough that you like you have your standards and you know that like if this person isn't working with them, you'll find someone else who will. I yeah, and I think to this person again, like, and I'm an easygoing person because I don't care about a lot, mm-hmm. like. What are you doing this weekend? I don't know. Like, <laughs> so you're nice. I'm nice. Right. So I'm saying, but I do, when I have an opinion on something, I've never been turned off by someone having feelings. Right. And like, I, and I think Pick I Pick a spe- restaurant. Right. Like, I, I don't like that place. All right. Let's move to something else. I'm more turned off by whatever you want. Whatever you want. Mm-hmm. What do you, okay. Oh, that's, a, it's not like. Hey, don't you have any questions for me? Right. It feels like date? you'll take like, any match. You'll take anyone. Right. Yeah. You want to? I I think a lot of people want to feel like it, they're it, being it, assessed as much as they're assessing. Right. And I think when you're dealing with someone who's not giving you feedback or not giving you any amount of like pita, right? It feels like you're just a restaurant they would sit at no matter what. I see. As opposed to. You feel special. I want to feel like I am tailor made to you, and you are tailor made to me. And I think that's a but that's a nice way to look at it, too, because it's like it's not about it's because every, every all of our preferences. You want a pain in the ass. It's about it's not about almost the thing that you want. It's about how it makes you feel. Right. Right. Yeah. Because you want that because it makes you feel more special. It makes you feel more chosen. Right. So when someone is that is a you know has an opinion and like. I, I, I take very, um, like, if someone says, I get messages all the time, where would you eat in this town? Like, that is them saying that they value the way I'm a pain in the ass right. about restaurants. Do you think if you were less of a people pleaser, you would be not looking for less of a pain in the ass? Let's say, like, you were more of the pain in the ass. Would you be looking for someone a little more easygoing so that you could pick all the restaurants? I guess, maybe. But I don't I don't think so. I don't think, I don't think no opinion is a better stance than opinion. Right. But maybe more flexible. Maybe there's flexible with opinion is fine. Flexible. Yeah. But you still have to stay. So I went there before. I didn't really like that restaurant, but if you really want to go, we could try it. I would, I would not want to go there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it would be exciting but, but for me. Would that be sufficient? 
uh, it, so but it, well, then I would say, on? well, if you've been, I'm not going. I, I want us both to judge this All place right, great. together. We'll go somewhere else then. Right. Yeah. I, I would be like, what's fun about that for me? To right. watch you go to see I was right? Yeah. Well, that's the funny thing about because I think women do that a lot. And then when suddenly when you start dating them, then they have more opinions mm -hmm. once because they don't feel safe to have opinions until they know that you like them. It sort of right. feels like this chicken or the egg thing where yeah. it's like, I don't feel safe to like be a strong negotiator until I feel like you're in. Or I don't feel safe enough to like feel strongly about this restaurant or this plan until I know that you're in. But you're kind of like, well, I don't even know you. How do I know if I'm in? Right. You're not even interested. Right. I want interesting. And I, I relate and I feel I feel for this person because I have the I had similar tendencies, just like the to revert it back to our first question about canceling a date. Right. Like just being more empowered to be like, this is what I have going on. Are you in or are you out? Right. Let's play some games. Let's you ready? Do it. Okay. Red flag or deal breaker. We love it. He has a lizard. <laughs> Hey, J and J, I was recently on a second date with a guy who revealed that he owned a lizard. Not just any lizard, a lizard that lives in a giant two by four foot glass cage in his bedroom in a tiny New York City apartment with no cover. You're thinking what I'm thinking. There's no way I'm going to sleep in a room that has a lizard, let alone have sex with the lizard watching me. Red flag or deal breaker, he has a lizard in the bedroom and not in a kinky way. XOXO, NYC lizard men are real. Here's the thing. The lizard in itself isn't a deal breaker to me, but I do think like the kind of guy who would have a big lizard in his New York City apartment wouldn't be a match for me. Mm. But it's not about the lizard itself. Do you know what I mean? It's about the care with which you are giving to the other person's emotional state that might sleep in your bedroom with a lizard. Or just knowing that like a lizard's like kind of a weird animal to just like have in your New York like a huge right. ass lizard. I just wouldn't think it would be a man. I just like it would be almost like too nerdy or too I don't even know what it is. I, too weird. They were on a second date, right? Yeah. So they had a good first date. I good guess. enough to get to that second date. And then he's like, I gotta let you know something. I'd be turned off by just the fact that he had a lizard. I need a cover on the lizard cage. Wouldn't you be like a little turned off by like there's something a little weird about this person that they just have a How do you huge... cuddle a lizard? How do you get into this? Like what right. made you wanna decide to have a lizard? I have more questions about their like their life. Pre lizard, post lizard. Yeah. How do you take care of it? What do you do on holidays? Do you travel with the lizard? Does it have a leash? Yeah. Like why? Why? I don't right. know. <laughs> <laughs> but to me, this goes into like back to the like. But the actual lizard in the room, I wouldn't be like scared, I don't think. I think I would. Oh, I, would? I just okay. need to know. I, I don't want to be looking at a lizard. While we're having sex? Eye to eye. <laughs> <laughs> the lizard just wink, wink. You well, know, what if I it was like a dog? The magic school bus lizard. What if it's a dog? Ah, the dog is fine. That's what I, I'm saying. Like, But I'm with you. Like. What makes you get the lizard? Yeah, that to me is like more of the turnoff. I just mm -hmm. wouldn't be, and I get nothing against people who have them. I just don't think I'd be a match. No, it's I have something against people who have okay. a lizard. I I'm gonna say that you're a little uh, weird. You're weird. That's what I'm saying. You're right. like a little weird. Not because how do you love it? Why 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 not get a dog? <laughs> right, like well, that, that's that's the thing. Like I I I know the social issues of a dog person. That's what I'm saying. Like, like they, they want something to love them no matter what. They're not getting enough from other places in their life. They want to <laughs> feel valued. So this thing that needs them, they have to feed it. Like, I know what's wrong with dog person. Okay. Cat person, I know what's wrong with them, They're too. All, you're right. You know the insecurities around everybody. Right. Yeah. I don't know what makes a person buy a lizard. That's what I'm saying. I think you're it's because right. uh, it's unconventional in, like, a weird way. I need The cover, I agree with the listener. The cover matters. Deal breaker. All right. Deal breaker for me, too. <laughs> hey, J&J, &J, but I still think they're a fine person. Fine. You could be a good person and own a lizard. I'm just, you should never have love. Exactly. <laughs> hey, J&J, &J, my boyfriend and I have been together for a year and a half now. Live together and are very happy, uh, we'll as see. all people who write in <laughs> are. We met at work and got together while doing a beer 5K with other coworkers. For context, I no longer work at the company, and he is seven years older than me. Right. He went on a work trip a few months ago with coworkers to a trade show. Big party scene for this industry, so naturally they went out drinking when the workday was over. He texted me through the night, letting me know where they were going and that he was safe. I asked who was there from work, but he failed to mention he was hanging out with the younger sales girls. <gasps> I only found this out Bluesies. because... Uh -huh, the young sales ladies. I only found this out because I saw their Instagram post from that night. This only concerns me because of the way we got together at a drunken outside-of-work event. 
Is it a red flag or deal breaker he leaves out these details? A once coworker turned girlfriend hoping this isn't a pattern. What do you mm. think? Hanging out with the young, the young women entry at the level office. ladies, yeah, the interns. I do feel like these conferences or like these work trips are like big opportunities for people to cheat on whoever they're with. Right. I know that's like kind of a stereotype, but I also feel like I've heard anecdotally that that's also kind well, of well because you're talking, you're in so you you know you're you spend, away from you're like for like a whole weekend. Right, and you you've been in social, you've been in work social things, and now you're in this like greater world. Right, where you're with the people all the time, like throughout. It almost feels like a mini camp. Right, you have a you have a relationship that's been built. I to me, I think this happens with a lot of guys. Me, you Mm. leave out things that you know will be a problem. Okay. So him leaving out, even if they're not a problem, even if they're not a problem, you're getting Mm. ahead. So is it a deal breaker? I wouldn't say. I wouldn't say deal breaker. I I think this is him going. He knows. He knows more than she's allowing him to know, which is that, yeah, we partied, and that's how we got together. And now I'm out partying with the younger sales girls. I'm not going to be like, I'm here with right. Stacey, Tracy, love that. and you know Casey. Yeah, She's not going to love that, and he knows that. So he was just like, you know what? We're out. I'm texting with her. Nothing's happening. I'm just going to have an easier day with her without talking about this than explaining it. Okay, but should she say something to him, in your opinion? Um, I think what you say is, like, I'd rather know and... Uh, I think I think what you say is exactly what she emailed us. Hey, saw, I, I was looking at whatever's Instagram story. Mm-hmm. I saw you, they were there with you. I'm going to be a little vulnerable. Sometimes because we met at work, I get a little anxious that, um, like, you're going to meet someone else at work. Mm-hmm. And... I think even more to that is like, hey, you can tell me when you're hanging out with women outside of work. Like, I, I, I trust why. Like, you, but, but also, also like, here's why that it makes right. me it, it made me feel a little anxious. Right. And now that you're leaving it out, it makes me think that you're thinking of it too. Right. Make me feel better. I don't know. Right. And I think no. I think yeah, because I think a little. And that's why I think she should say how like it makes her feel and what her actual fear is because it's vulnerable. Right. Right. And like. To res- I think that's the only way to do it without sounding like you're accusatory mm-hmm. or something. Yeah, because I do think, you know, sh- he obviously left this out on purpose. Right, if she saw it. Because he's saying who he hung out with and right. he just didn't mention them. And, you know, if you're in a relationship where this guy's like, I don't want to deal with it, there's other things going on. Deal do with what? If he's leaving this out because he's like, he knows that this is going to be like, texting all night and you're going to get weird over text and right. your she whole vibe is going to change. Totally. Like she has to, to be self aware about her, her reactions. Right. So it's like, is there a past of like, Hey, I'm out with like the, and she says it's like a, a party industry. Mm-hmm. Is there a past of like every time it comes up, you get a little weird and you get a little like standoffish. And he's like, Oh, I don't like dealing with the standoffish person. So now he's in a position where he's like hiding it. Mm-hmm. Like I, I'm not like, He's the tougher person to empathize with, right? Well, you don't know if this is an isolated. Waiting up, looking out at the moon, hoping he's in bed. (laughs) Well, is it an isolated incident, or is it something that you feel like is a concern of yours ongoing? And if it's if you've gotten jealous before, how have you reacted? Right, and 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 if the reaction has been that you get a little, to me, I can understand how this. He leaves it out because, like, ugh, every time I bring up that I'm going out with work people, her texts get weird. And right. I'm not looking to play that game tonight. Mm-hmm. And then he gets found, and now it's gotten even weirder. They have to talk about this. Right. And she has to talk about if she trusts him, because if right. she is very concerned. She's right. And I, I think what you're th- saying is correct. If she brings up, we met at work. Here's why. Right. Here's where it comes from. Here's the root. Yeah. They're right now. Then you're having a conversation that could bring you closer together. Right. They're They're in the, they're, in, they're out here. They need to get to the root, and that's more the root. Right, which I think is a valid. Cons- I don't think you would anyone would hear that and be like, "You're fucking crazy." Why would I like? No. If you're a normal, nice partner, I think you would say like, "I can understand why you might feel that way." Here's why I didn't didn't tell you about that. I'm gonna try to do X, Y, and Z. Like that would make you feel better. Right, and also, you have to like be able to get over it. Right. Hey, I'm gonna be at work parties. Sure. I'm not looking to cheat on you. You have to trust me. 
Like, right. But like, I think she could say like, but I'll trust you more. Like if, if even if you're hanging out with someone you think I might not like, you could still tell me like to hide it and feels worse for me. Right. But if I tell you who it is, you have to be cool. Can you not be a, a different fucking person? I think that's fair too. Yeah, I think well, that'd be my well, feedback to them. That's the conversation right. you need to have over this. And again, yeah. I think if that's the kind of thing you work out, then that brings you closer. Then you have a better relationship. Right. Let's do one more. All right. J and J, big fan of you both and the pod. Also, looking forward to seeing one of Jared's live shows coming up. Thank you. I have a red flag or deal breaker for you. I went on a third date with a guy at a sports bar. I was fine with a more casual hang. He accepted my offer to split the bill, which was relatively inexpensive for beers and burgers. I don't know how to not offer, but small red flag to me to accept the offer split early on, which is a controversial opinion, I know. I don't think that's a controversial. Totally agree with that. It's exactly yeah. what I would do. It's fine. <laughs> I would it's do it, and then if he accepted, I would still pay, but I would be, I would note it, and I'd be a little turned off. It's on the resume. Yes. Totally understandable. I can get past splitting the bill, but after we paid, he was openly taking a photo of the receipt. I asked why, and he was zero shame, said he was uploading it to an app where you earn a percentage money back on receipts at a specific restaurant to use towards gift cards. <laughs> <laughs> Something is... Yeah. Uh, keep in mind, he picked the place, and it was in his neighborhood, which made me think he chose it because it was on this app. And I split the check, so he got money back on my, on my <laughs> half of the bill. <laughs> I decided it was a deal breaker as it felt cheap, and he could have been more discreet, especially since he got rewards on the portion I paid for. For reference, he's 30, employed, and we're not on that on that level and had just kissed at that point. So red flag or deal breaker. Splits the bill with you and then openly uploads the total receipt to a cash back rewards app for himself. Thanks for all you do, an unrewarded bitch. I love this yeah. one. To me, th all these things indicate that he's not that interested in her. Oh, interesting. Or he's very cheap. I don't know. One or the two. Things. There's no thought that this is like a very organized and – just like it is funny that there's a time in life where you might be married to this guy and you'll be like, that's who he is. That's what he does. This is his passion. I just you know, like, like me with Delta. He... Like, like I, I, you know, I'm not I'm not saying what this was done in a classy way. This mm -hmm. is done in a very clumsy, feels tacky, unfuckable way. Yeah. Like this guy did. I not... would be very turned off. By yeah, all this of it, is right? not a good look. Let me just say that. Yeah. But there is a thought of like. You know. This person, like, really values getting all the bang for his buck. And sure. there's a point in life but where people are like, it. thank God my husband's that way. Fine. But to me, if on a first date you're doing this, you value it more than you value uh, getting fucked. Right. <laughs> like, right. Yeah, which is yeah. not hot. Right. I, I, and, and also, even if you're bringing that in, like, if you're doing this on a first date, what other ways are you going to embarrass me? Even if it did work, I assume you're not. If a guy let me, first of all, if a guy, if I offered to pay for half at a sports bar that a guy picked, and he accepted, I would assume he wasn't interested in me. Here's the PETA moment. If 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 we can go back sure. to the PETA conversation, the PETA moment is to go, "What are you doing?" And they're like, "I'm taking a picture of the receipt, yeah, to get my cash back points from the unfuckable app." Mm -hmm. And then you go, you don't think that's crazy? And then they're like, well, why? Well, like, I would say I would having that I conversation would say that. is when you're a PETA and you're showing your opinion, your feelings. Like I would say that I would I would say that, but I would say I would be more likely to do that because I would already be not interested from having split the check. That I would be like nothing to lose, uh, which right. is exactly I'm a, a PETA's negotiator. Sure, more likely to say that. Yeah. If I was re okay, so I'm guessing in a situation where I was really into him and I didn't care that I paid for half and I didn't care that he and I was like saw this didn't like thought it was a little weird. Would you say a little weird? Would, I, would you ask? I think you'd be more likely to ask a question. What is this? Right. And then he's, what is there a way where he's like, listen, points just fucking get me. Like, I, I, I'm a points guy. Mm -hmm. Like, and I use these points. I get them back. Um, yeah, I'm using your half of the meal, too, because do you have the app? You don't have it, so that we can't let these points go to waste. Right. Well, I'd have, to, know, I'd have to then make a joke about it and make it like. Right. I think you two could get to know each other on a different level. Calling, asking about this, mm -hmm. asking about what turns you off, I think is like kind of like a fun strategy. This is a good point. Okay, I think if he had paid the whole check mm -hmm. and used the app and done the picture thing, 
not would, as bad. Not as bad. Right. A little weird. I would I would say something then. I would like kind of make a joke about it then. Sure. But if he did that alongside allowing me to pay for half, right? I think I would be I would not be interested in another date. Right, because now you're cheap. Right. One now is my, cheap right. and the other is economical. Right. One is like, oh, you like you're really into points. That's cool. Like I like I like points. Right. Um, cheap versus like, thrifty. Right. The it's, other one is like at my expense. Right. No, it's fair. It's it's um. Yeah, I I I mean I or like do it in the bathroom or something. I don't know. <laughs> I've had women take leftovers from a date and it turned me off. Yeah. And I think it's very similar to this. Totally. You know, I paid. You're taking leftovers. I'm paying for lunch now. <laughs> like what's going on so i do understand like would you say anything no ah uh, because <laughs> you're not a pita <laughs> i'm not a pita you I'm would not. never say anything no i'd be like yeah don't go no have it for lunch tomorrow take it as i yeah. watch them walk away and me decide to never call them again that will that's a, that's why you're not a pita either no but yeah i agree he pays for the date i think this is only a red flag if he paid for the whole date right fine deal breaker because of the split and getting yes. your points too. I'm with you. I hear it. We, we solved it. dating again. We did it. Proud of us. Boom. Bye. The U Up podcast is produced by Bell Roman and Candice Miniga. Edited by Bell Roman. Social media by Candice Miniga. Guest booking by Ali Friedlander. VP of podcast is Chris Allen. And be sure to follow U Up at u.up.podcast.